Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati. I'm here in Singapore on my way back home from the Philippines. Um, and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, the commander of the Iranian Air Force, General um, Aziz, uh, let, me, <laughs> let me give you his exact name. Well, anyway, that general, that clown, uh, just said a few minutes ago, the following thing he said our armed forces are getting ready for the final uh for the final um battle and uh in which israel will be destroyed general aziz nasirazada nasirzada that's his name the iranians uh, had a big blow uh, a few hours ago when israel destroyed um, communication systems, intelligence uh, com uh, facilities, training center, weapon cage, uh, uh, and storage for some some game changing um, um, equipment that they had there, and um, they are very frustrated. Anyway, the general that is heading the Iranian Air Force, General Aziz Narsirzada, just said that Iran's armed forces are preparing themselves for the destruction of Israel. And um, first of all, we all know that uh, Iran is going to play a very significant role in the um, Ezekiel War. But we also know what's going to happen as God will intervene and they will be destroyed supernaturally. However, I would like to read to General Nasir Zada a verse from the Bible. And that is from Jeremiah 31, verse 36. Actually, it goes to from 35 to 36. Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who disturbs the sea and its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Basically, what God is telling the uh, generals and the leaders of Iran, and I can say that, listen also, the leaders of Russia, the leaders of, of uh, Turkey, the leaders of Libya, and the leaders of Sudan, listen carefully. Only when the sun, the moon, and the stars will no longer be there, Israel will cease from being a nation before God, which is... Draw, get, um, taking all of us to one conclusion. Only when God is going to make all things new, new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem, Revelation 21 says that there will be no more need for sun, moon, or stars to shine their light because the Lord, He is going to illuminate that city. And so in the eternal city of the new Jerusalem, there's only believers. There's no more Jews or Gentiles. And Israel is no longer, no longer a nation there, but we are all one big family of believers there. But until then, until God makes all things new, until He's making new heavens and new earth, until the sun, the moon, and the stars will cease from being there, Israel will be a nation before God. Israel will not be destroyed. Israel cannot be destroyed. Israel is standing there as a proof to the world that God exists. And therefore, um, I suggest to all of us not to uh, be afraid and not to be shaken by threats uh, such as of those of General Nasir Zada. Um, I warmly invite him to read the Bible, which is the true Word of God, and is not something that is um, 
um, is not something that was rewritten in the seventh century by someone and changed and 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 became a holy book for another religion. It is the authentic, original, unchanging word of God. And the Lord says to the whole world, Israel is my nation, as long as the sun, the moon, and the stars are there. And so, yes, there was a major strike a few hours ago. Yes, the Iranians are very frustrated. Yes, they are plotting a major strike. Yes, the Bible says they will strike. Yes, it will be a major war against Israel together with other countries. Yes, it will not be pretty. But the victory is already promised by the Lord to Israel. And it will absolutely not be because Israel is strong or any other country that came to Israel uh, was strong. It was going to be a supernatural victory that the Lord himself will provide with many amazing um, amazing phenomena that are going to take place, such, of course, as earthquake and, of course, things that are going to fall from heaven on those uh, troops. And they will be defeated in the mountains of Israel. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure we will be here as believers, but I am sure that the, the people of Israel will see the hand of God once again prevailing, once again saving them, once again um, being there for them. Because trust me, when, when Russia is coming against you, when Iran and Turkey and Sudan and Libya are coming against you, there's really not much that you can do as a little country in the Middle East beside calling uh, and crying out to the Lord to help. And by the way, it's something that the people of Israel have been doing for the longest time. When trouble comes, uh, when uh, tribulation comes, oftentimes you see hundreds of thousands of Jews gathering at the Wailing Wall and many other places, and many synagogues and other places, and they literally cry out to God for help. And the Bible says that every time Israel cry out for help, God was always there to come and save them. We see that in Psalm 107, when the Bible says that uh, when they rebelled against the word of God and he, he allowed them to be in that darkness, but when they called out to the Lord, he was there to rescue them. So we have to remember those things. As believers, we must be not only strong, but also very um, encouraged by what we see around us. We are not watching world events that surprises us. We're watching world events that confirms everything we already know. And that also is added to that which we know regarding our future. Our gathering to be with the Lord. Our return on to earth with the Lord to reign with Him for a thousand years. And our secured eternal life in eternal Jerusalem in the new Jerusalem, when he will make all things new, when we will enter into eternity. So there's so much that we can draw encouragement from, that we can um, be uh, excited about. But we're going to hear a lot of threats. We're going to hear a lot of uh, interesting uh, remarks from many different people. Prime Minister Netanyahu just said a few hours ago that whoever is threatening to destroy Israel will bear the consequences. I wish he knew that the consequences are not exactly Israel's strength and Israel's strong hand, but the consequences are going to be the hand of God that is uh, going to be strong on those people. So just wanted to encourage all of us. We, I'm reporting on Twitter almost on an hourly basis. Um, the things that are happening, the situation in the Middle East is escalating quite uh, rapidly. Um, however, all that I do is not to 
scare people, but to encourage the believers and to also cause the non-believers to think and to reconsider. Because um, the Bible is not only um, the Word of God, but it's also more accurate than today's newspaper. And we see those things happening. You know, we could have told the world what is going to happen uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. We know that is going to be a um, return of the Jewish people back to their land. We know that there's going to be prosperity in Israel if nations will come to plunder and steal. We know that it will be Russia and Iran and Turkey that will come from the north and Libya and Sudan from the south. We know these things, not because we are so clever, it's because the Word of God told us. And therefore, the same accuracy and reliability and authenticity that the Bible projected when it comes to past events that have been fulfilled should be also um, for present and future events as well. So many prophecies were there for the first coming of Jesus. All of them have been accurately fulfilled by the Lord. And therefore, there is no reason for us to believe, to not believe that the rapture and the second coming of Jesus with us uh, will not be as precise and as accurate as the Bible says. So we are greatly encouraged. I want to I want you to to understand that I'm not afraid as an Israeli. I'm going back home to a place where I feel safer than any other place on planet Earth. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my God is there who keeps Israel and He neither slumbers nor sleep. There is no other, uh, there is no other nation that is described like that in the Bible that God or their God is neither slumber nor sleep. Um, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. I'm in a country where God is our protector. I'm in a country where it is the apple of his eyes. I'm in a place that is already promised not only survival, but also prosperity and peace. Also, tribulations in the future, but eventually the Bible says that when the times of the, or the number of the Gentiles is going to come in, then all Israel will be saved. So even spiritually, Israel is being promised an amazing, amazing thing. So I, I, uh, I want to encourage you all, and, and in the meantime, let's just do the most important thing that is of course to share the gospel with the lost world i hope you all understand that the blood moon is over and we're still here and i hope you all understand that we have a lot of things to do until god is coming to take us i hope you all understand that um, until he comes we're called to occupy the harvest fields are plentiful. They are ready. They're ripe. Look, I came from the Philippines. I don't know if you know that, but um, I had a lot of opportunities to share and a lot of opportunities to minister. But one of the most amazing things that I have experienced there is that I was invited to the largest university in the Philippines, the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, the PUP. And under the auspices of uh, the Bible, the Bible month that President Duterte declared as uh, for January. Every January is the Bible month. The believer, the believers in amongst the professors are taking advantage of it, rightfully, in their organizing events. And one of them was inviting me to to teach, and uh, I was in a room full of uh, more than a thousand students. And I was able not only to teach them about the blessed hope, most of them heard for the first time about the rapture. They never heard that term before. They're not being taught that in, in their traditional churches or in, in their uh, evangelical churches. They're not. They heard about it for the first time, and I was able, I was allowed to lead them 
into a prayer of salvation. And, and that is an amazing opportunity that God is giving all of us in different places around the world. And we better seize the moment. So um, we need to tell the people of the blessed hope. We need to give them the hope. And the hope is not some fruit of our imagination. It's the most important promise that Jesus gave to his followers. He said, look, I'm uh, going to prepare a place for you. And uh, if it wasn't so, I would have told you, he said. But I will come back and I will receive you unto myself. So where I am, you will also be. And Jesus is up there. He didn't say, so where you are, I will also be. He said, where I am, you will also be. He's about to come and take us. And this is why First Thessalonians 4 is saying that, For the Lord himself will descend He's up there. He will have to get off his throne, descend once again to the clouds. And we will meet him in the air. And he will take us to be with him to those mansions that he's been working and preparing uh, for us. Um, he's been working on and preparing for us for the last 2,000 years. It's going to be amazing. This is the blessed hope. My hope is not in this world. My hope is not that... This is the best that God can do. This is a fallen world. And all creation is groaning, is waiting for the redemption. Um, you know, we are hoping for the redemption of our body from this world. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is promising all of us. Behold, I tell you a mystery. Not all of us are going to die, but all. All of us are going to change. So this very lowly body that we have is not going to stay there forever. In a twink in twinkling of an eye, at the trumpet shout, we are going to wear incorruption. Our dying cells are going to change. And our body is going to change into a glorified one. The... Gravity is not going to hold uh, hold us down here anymore. And we'll be out of here. And uh, I'm wondering what the world is going to say. Or how, how is it that they're going to explain that? I believe that they will probably somehow say that Earth purged itself. They're probably going to talk about some aliens that came. They, you know, they're already... Um, floating some of those theories right now. I don't really care what they say. I care that as many will be with us as we are being taken out of here. My dream is not to be here. My home is not here. My citizenship is not of this world. And that's what we need. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, if you then have been raised or resurrected with Christ, then seek those things which are above, where Christ is. So we need to think about those things. We need to think about our rapture. We need to think about our time in heaven. We need to think about the crowns that we're going to lay down at His feet. We need to think about the marriage supper of the Lamb. We need to think about the return with Him. We need to think about the, the millennial kingdom in which we reign with Him. We need to think about the amazing uh, judgment that is going to be followed about the rest of the world. And we need to think about eternity with Him forever and ever. There is no more temple. There is no more sun or moon or stars. And the Lord is going to be the light of the world as He was in the beginning. And He's going to be, the, um, of course, the temple itself. And uh, there, is no, there's no, there won't be any, any more need for a physical temple. So I'm excited. World events are amazing. But I just wanted to encourage all of you that um, as we move forward and things are going to get more and more intense and more and more um, probably even violent around the world, let's remind ourselves that we are here for a reason and for a season. You know, Jesus could have asked God in the book of John, when he was praying, he said, Father, I do not ask that you will take them out of this world. But Father, I ask that you will keep them from the evil one. 
he, he left us here for a reason. And he promised that he will take us. But until then, he's praying for us to, so we will, that we will be kept away from the evil one. But the reason why we're here is because we need to share the gospel. So I just, I felt uh, the urge to share that with you because uh, if you follow me on Twitter, Behold Israel, or on Facebook, on YouTube, and all of that, you may, you may get a little scared sometimes because, you know, stuff that are, is being said and, and, uh, by politicians or generals or the enemies of Israel, it's quite scary if, you're, if you don't have the security of your salvation. But um, we need to remember that, um, again, our hope is not in this world. And our blessed hope is really around the corner. So let's um, keep the good work. Let's uh, work uh, hard on the Great Commission. And... Um, we all want to hear the beautiful words, good job, well done, faithful servant. So I'm about to board my flight to Europe and back to Israel from here, from Singapore. Just wanted to share with you those few words of encouragement, maybe of exhortation. And um, I guess the next time we're going to talk again here on Facebook will be from my beloved home from Galilee or from the city of Jerusalem. Shalom and thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.